Hey, this is Dr. Allo. So I get asked a lot about what's in your library. So today we're going to do a tour of my library. It's a mixture of all kinds of books, everything from coaching to eating, diet, exercise, nutrition, all kinds of things. So I have it usually organized sort of by shelving. Down at the bottom that you may or may not see are a lot of books on um, quotes and quips and public speaking and, you know, how to write uh uh, you know, proper quotations and proper grammar when you're writing articles and whatnot. Um, I think we'll start at the top. This is the part that probably most people are interested in. Um, at the top, I have mostly my uh, workout slash muscle building type books. I have Fat Loss Forever um, by Lane Norton. And this is the ones I'm going to probably focus on and talk about a lot. We'll probably have to do an entire other video on this. If you had to buy one single weight loss book, I would recommend Lane Norton's book. It is expensive, um, but it's totally, totally worth it. So I highly recommend Fat Loss Forever. You'll notice I have every single weight loss book that's pretty much ever been published, except some of the really bad ones. I really didn't want to support the authors because I, I read them online and, and they were just terrible. Um, so that's that one. I also have the Glute Lab by Brett Contreras. This is a hard copy, hard cover book. It's almost like a textbook. Um, you'll see in these pages, they even have like exercise uh, demonstrations and all kinds of things. It's very, very, very well written. It's definitely quite long, but it's also worth it. Also super expensive, kind of like Fat Loss Forever. Um, I also have the NASM Personal Trainer uh, book. This is the course that I took to become a certified personal trainer. Highly recommend this uh, personal training program. If you want to become a personal trainer, this is the one you should do. Um, there's obviously a lot of other ones that you could do. Um, a lot of the next ones are by Dr. Schoenfeld, uh, Brad Schoenfeld, um, Strength, Strong and Sculpted, mostly uh, for women. He also has the Muscle Hypertrophy Guide, which is also like a textbook. I also have the new version of that. Um, new Functional Trainer for Sports, also an excellent book. And the Science and Development of Muscle Hypertrophy. I think this is the earlier version uh, of Schoenfeld's book, but these are all also excellent. Um, lots of other books here. Um, Another one by Dr. Schoenfeld, Muscle, uh, a Maximum Muscle Plan, also by Brad Schoenfeld. He runs a lab that studies muscle hypertrophy, and his books are just phenomenal. Um, another really good book by uh, Dr. Mike Isertel is Renaissance Periodization. This is the second version of it. Here he goes through how to build muscle, you know, the different things that he uses. Um, for muscle building, it's paperback. It's a little smaller than the other ones. It's an excellent book. They also do have some diet uh, nutrition information in there as well, not just on exercise. I like this book a lot. Um, the two books that most people probably start with is Michael Matthews' books, the one for men on bigger, leaner, stronger, and the one for women on thinner, leaner, stronger. Both also excellent. This is a really good place to start if you are going from nothing, uh, you know, overweight, couch potato, and you have no clue. Very, very well researched. A lot of the stuff that he says in here, um, well documented in research, and it goes a lot with my philosophy, similar to Fat Loss Forever by Dr. Lane Norton. But this also includes a lot of exercise programs, not just how to lose weight, but also exercises, demonstrations of the exercises, all the compound lifts, and how to do them properly. Now, there are lots of other books up here, lots of baseball coaching books. Powerfully Fit is another good one. Lots of books on coaching mentality, um, the science of being a coach and how to motivate young people as well as older people, how to coach them up and how to motivate them uh, enough to be able to uh, listen to you, how to become a leader. There's a lot of leadership books here. My favorite book on leadership is Peter Drucker's books. The man is a brilliant genius. He has one on how to run a nonprofit organization and lots and lots of leadership books. Highly, highly recommend. Um, my other favorite, current favorite uh, exercise, nutrition, fitness kind of book is the, Re the Resistance Training Re Re Revolution by Sal DiStefano. 
I was featured on Mind Pump a few weeks ago and they all signed it for me. Um, this is an excellent book talking about if you had to pick one form of exercise to base your entire workout regimen on, it shouldn't be cardio. You, if you want to look better, lose weight, cardio is probably the hardest way to do that. It does work and it does burn lots and lots of calories. But if you want to look good in the end and you want to up your metabolism, you got to read this book and add in resistance training. Um, another book that I got recently is called Retention Point. This guy talks about how do you get people um, to stick with you. Like, you know, he talks about Netflix. Once you watch, uh, if you're watching a new uh, series like Narcos or, you know, House of Cards, after you watch ep season one, episode three, that's it, you're hooked. You're most likely to, to watch the whole thing. So he has been leveraging um, the single best secret to membership and sub subscription growth. He's been leveraging that type of psychology and helping huge brands and huge companies to get people to stick with them. Like, what is the point or how do you hook people into being a follower for life? Sort of like in the leadership kind of business entrepreneur uh, category. Um, there's lots of books on pitching. There's books on golf. There's books on soccer. The Dutch Soccer Secrets book. Love that one. Um, uh, how how football explains America. This is by Sal Palantonio. Um, this is a really good book. It explains kind of how football uh, going down the field slowly kind of explains the American expansion in the in the United States or what's called America now, um, and how it's different than soccer and other sports. Like why do Americans love football? Because there's strategy involved. You huddle up. You do meet. You have a meeting. You decide how to proceed and go forward. It's not just like this free flow haphazard game, sort of like soccer and some of these other games. Um, I love this book when I had originally read it. Um, more books on baseball. Um, lots of books on the golf swing and the short game in golf. If you're a big golfer, you kind of know what this is. Um, books on lawns and landscaping. I'm huge into lawns. Uh, I don't know why, but I got into this phase once where I bought every book you could read about grass, <laughs> basically lawns and landscaping. Um, things that they didn't teach you at B uh, Harvard Business School. Um, some magic books, More Guns, Less Crime, which is a book written by two Chicago economists and a lawyer um, that talked about how allowing concealed carry has reduced most crime rates in most states. Um, a lot of book books on fishing. Uh, I, I'm huge into fishing and golfing. Obviously, I love the outdoors. I've coached and played every single sport. Now that I can't play tackle football, which is my favorite sport, uh, I actually <clears throat> golf and play soccer and some other like non-contact, non-dangerous sports. Although I have been injured, you know, playing basketball multiple times or baseball or running or sprinting, whatever it is. Um, so that's kind of the first shelf there. The next shelf here is books on like how to succeed, how to be an entrepreneur, how to be a leader. I talked about Drucker's books. Um, a lot of these are um, by Robert Greene. Um, there's one called The Selfish Gene, um, which talks about how people, if left to their own vices, will do what's in their own best interest. And there's like this selfish gene. Um, really good, really good read. The book by Robert Greene called Power or like the 48 Laws of Power is an excellent read. Probably everyone at some point in their time should read this or at least read a shortened version of it. Um, goes through a lot of examples of how power plays a role in your job, your life, your, your, your moving up in your life and in your job. Love this book. Um, the Art of Seduction also by Robert Greene is in there. Not, not seduction like in a sexual way, but, but that's involved too. But, but how you get people to like you or want you or, or, you know, things like that. Similar to The Selfish Gene, there was another book um, that I'll get to in a second <clears throat> that was called The, uh, well, I'll find that one in a second. But another uh, really good book, if I had to recommend, I recommend Fat Loss Forever as the only weight loss book you should ever read. But if I had to recommend one single book on how to generate wealth and, and a financial book. Like what should your financial strategy be? It would be this one, The Simple Path to Wealth. Excellent, excellent, phenomenal book written by J.L. Collins. They have a website actually. You could read almost all their articles, but this talks about using low cost total market index funds, slowly adding to it. You'll make 10 to 12, sometimes a lot more per year. Start putting away money, put 10,000 in to start or maybe less, add 100, 1,000 a month, whatever it is. By the time you're like 40 or 50, you will have millions in the bank and can do whatever you want. The other book that I highly recommend, not as much as this one, is The Millionaire Next Door. Great book I also read in the 90s. Um, it's a book about basically 
most millionaires in the United States, 85% of them were made in that generation. It was the guy that lived next to you, living off 60, maybe 80,000 a year, put away money, put away money, put away money by the time he retired, using most likely total stock market index funds that are low cost, was a millionaire. Um, they didn't go out and buy the nicest suits, they didn't go out and buy the nicest cars, they lived within their means, saved as much as they could, put it in the correct investment vehicles and ended up making a lot of money. So highly recommend this one as well. Um, another book that is more like leadership uh, related is The Seven uh, Habits of Highly Effective People. It's not like anything earth shattering or groundbreaking, but if you've never been around leadership, you've never been in a leadership role, this is a great book for you to kind of see how leaders think and how you can implement these seven habits into your life. Of course, he's gone on and made tons more books, but this is back from the 90s. Most of my books are from the 90s because back then we didn't have digital books or PDFs or whatever. So most of these books I bought in the 90s, and you can see there's a lot of note cards in here, you know, marking, you know, various sections that I enjoyed reading and, and would go back to. Um, there's a book called The Checklist Manifesto, also really good. There's a book on the successful physician negotiator. Like if you're a physician, you're negotiating a contract, make sure you know what you're doing. Super expensive book um, because there's no, it's no longer in print, but I found one on eBay. Um, Get Anyone to Do Anything, also a really good book. Lots of books on stock market investing and options trading. I was huge into the stock market as a kid in high school. I uh, won my economics class. Uh, stock picking game that we did for six months. I went on to start my own like investing company, invested money for people, um, got into stock options later on, made tons of money, but also you can lose tons of money. You just got to know what you're doing. Um, but I've always been huge into the markets and finances. I mean, that's my, that's my undergrad degree. My undergrad degree is economics and finance. So this is a huge part of my life. Economics is the study of decision making. So you use it every day whether you know it or not. Um, every day when I decide to take this car instead of that car or start a patient on this medication instead of this medication, it's the science of decision making. Every decision you take or make um, comes down to some choices you had to pick, pros and cons, uh, bad versus good. Why did you pick that medicine? Why did you ride this car? Why did you fill gas here? Why did you stop for food there? What did you eat for lunch? All of that is economics. And that's kind of what led me down the road of eventually becoming a doctor. Um, over here, there's on the side, there's books on resumes, speaking, quotations, speak easy, power resumes, 200 damn good examples of resumes. The next, uh, the next shelf here um, is books on grilling, deer hunting, bow hunting, uh, a beekeeping book. Um, the South Beach Diet, this was kind of huge. Um, Dr. Gaston wrote this book. He's a cardiologist out of South Beach, Florida. He's the one who invented the CT coronary scan, actually. Um, this was a huge book right after Atkins. Atkins came out with, you know, try to avoid carbs. He came out with, when you're eating fat, try to pick good fats or, you know, try to pick healthier carbs or try to hit, pick healthier proteins, obviously, as a cardiologist. Um, <clears throat> another good book is How Doctors Think. This is written... To, a, to patients to realize how do doctors think. Um, sugar busters, um, this was popular back in the day. So supposedly if you avoid white sugar, white bread, white anything, or you know processed sugars at, at all, this will help you lose weight. Um, Backyard Beekeeper, another book, really don't like this guy at all. Why We Get Fat and What to Do About It. This is by Gary Taubes. He is purportedly a doctor. He's actually a journalist, um, but he has a PhD in something. He's very dogmatic. He believes the only way to lose weight is to eat lots and lots of fat and protein and try to avoid carbs like the plague. We obviously know this is not true. He has been debated multiple times on YouTube and other places. And they ask him point blank, hey, if we showed you a study that showed that all of what you've written and come up with is absolutely wrong, would you change your mind? He says no. Um, because there have been tons and tons of studies now that show you can lose weight eating just Twinkies or carbs or whatever you want as long as you're in a calorie deficit. So glad I kind of regret buying that book but somebody told me about it um, other books let's see we got Urban's Way I'm a huge Ohio State fan um, and Urban Meyer uh, I love his books I love the, I, love, I love this one no, I didn't read the other ones but this was a great book into like what goes on behind the scenes and, and when they made when he made that run in Florida he, he he was the Bowling Green coach which is just down the road from me in Ohio just south of Toledo um, he eventually went on to become the Utah coach and the Florida coach, and he took this team and won the national championship against the highly rated Ohio State team. Um, they were ranked like number one. Florida was ranked four. No one thought they would do anything. How did he rile these monsters up and get them to destroy Ohio State? Um, huge 
win their uh, great book on leadership. Um, this is called Brand NFL. A friend of mine who runs the NFL Players Association is the president of it, gave me this great book on like how do you brand yourself. So e excellent read there too. Um, another book I really like is called Soccer Soccernomics. As an economist, this is about the economics of soccer. How They talk about how countries with the largest GDPs usually win the World Cup, with the exception of the United States. And why is that? Why hasn't the U.S. men's team, at least, not won a World Cup? So it goes into a lot of details. I, I really love this book. also goes into a lot of statistics um, in soccer, like, you know, how what percentage of time when you throw the ball in does your team retain possession and lots of things that you know help you with coaching um i have written i have since written two soccer coaching books and you can use a lot of statistics or i use a lot of statistics in that um, for that the next shelf is um mostly dictionaries and thesauruses and some some stuff on cardiology um, nothing that exciting there. More books on speaking, some books on OMT or osteopathic manipulative training. I'm an osteopathic physician, a DO. We crack backs and necks and manipulate muscles and you know twist and turn people in the right position to get them to um, Im improve their functionality. This is the Merck Manual. It's a really old medical book from like the 18 or 1900s. Um, they even have like the smaller edition that comes with it that's like even older, like really, really old. Um, but very good. Like I got this as a gift, you know, somebody knew I was going into medicine and gave me this as a gift. I love this book. It's historical. It's funny to read some of the stuff, um, that's in there. Um, lots of like EKG and cardiology books down there too. Down at the bottom is lots of, uh, more medical, uh, books. And that's kind of it for my library. I, I like a little bit, uh, on each shelf and I like to kind of keep them organized. Fat Loss Forever, definitely my favorite weight loss book. I'll do an entire review on that. At all. I've read every single weight loss book and research study. I'll actually link them below. I go, I go through every research study ever done on weight loss in an entire like almost two hour lecture plus diet plus exercise. There's a, there's a whole two hour lecture on exercise research, all the studies we go through it one by one. There's another one on diet. We go through all the diet research studies. Lots of good stuff there. The next one is mostly like the financial kind of uh, stuff and some hobby stuff like there's some hobby stuff up here with the golfing and whatnot and then there's like the grilling hunting you know some weight loss books you know football books branding books things like that i really love um, this stuff i come down here every once in a while I'll just sit down on the desk and read some books i love lazy weekends where you just can get the chance to sit down so hopefully you get an idea of some of the stuff i've read and some of the stuff that's shaped me uh, over my life um, nowadays you don't actually need to print books, but I like sitting down with a book, even outside in a hammock or by the pond or by a water fountain, just reading. Um, so I prefer printed books. You could definitely, uh, get the tablet edition or the Kindle edition, just read them on your phone or on your tablet. Um, but highly recommend, uh, these books and I hope you enjoyed the tour of my library. There'll be lots of stuff in the description below.